Hello and welcome back to Kitty Talks Dogs. Today we are going to groom a new Foundland dog and it's going to be a show groom. If you want to see everything about preparing a new Foundland dog for the dog show, this is your video. Today we have with us Tum Tum and Tum Tum is bred in the kennel from Bono's Newfies and the breeder's name is Peter Fiemann. Tum Tum is born in 2020 and is a multi-champion, has titles on him like Luxembourg champion and much more. Tum Tum is owned by Linda de Veter and Tum Tum loves swimming. And apart from swimming, Tum Tum likes going to the dog shows also very much because he knows when he goes to the dog shows, he gets lots of attention. The Newfoundland breed is an exceptional companion dog with a very gentle, soft temperament. The Newfoundland dog's origin comes from Newfoundland and was usually used for rescuing drowning people out of the water. He's a working dog and the males can weigh up to 68 kilos. The Newfoundland dog has a very dense double coat, which is like nearly waterproof. It comes in colors black, brown or chocolate, and black and white. First, we will do ears, nails, wash, dry, and then style. But if you would like to forward the video to the part you would like, for example, styling or finishing, you are very welcome to also go down below and just visit the part of the video you would like. Because of my bad back and Tum Tum's size and weight, I've called in Kitty Ponnet to help me with preparing Tum Tum. So Kitty, thank you for helping me out here. If you see any of the products that you're interested in, just scroll down below and there's a link there. If you click on there, you will have a whole list of all products I've been using. Here you see the ear products, which we are going to use on Tum Tum. First, here you see Kitty putting the ear care in the ear. Uh, we can fill the ear totally up with the ear care, but as you see, Tum Tum has really very much wax, so we will put the ear care in and gradually take out as much as possible wax. Normally we put the ear care in and we leave it in for like 30 seconds and we give the ear a little massage and we let the products dissolve all the wax taking out between the big ear flaps and the, the crinkles, we hear we are cleaning it out with the ear wipe. Also on top of the ear flap, we, it's a very good thing to use the ear wipes. So also the ear itself is degreased and very clean. Now we have a squeaky clean ear, but because we've been rubbing with the Q-tips and with the wipes a lot up and down to get all the wax out, here you see us using the ear care cream. This will guard for infection and will soothe the skin. And here you see Kitty cutting the nails. Sometimes it's very difficult to cut black nails because you don't see the, the vein in there and you just have to like go little bit at a little bit and just make sure they are not too short. And personally, we like to like make the nails after cutting very much rounded so they have no edges and even you can go a little bit shorter with the nail file. As you can see here now they are nicely rounded off. Here you see the products we are going to use. We've decided to use the Showtech Plus pure coat because of its degreasing effects 
And as we know, the Newfoundlander has a very greasy coat because he needs a greasy coat to go swimming all the time and to be like water resistant. And then we are going to use the Timaha clay shampoo because this is a shampoo, as we say, clay. It's based on clay. It's for detoxing the coat and skin and has a very good effect on the double coats. And then we are going to use the conditioner, the flash thermo from Hydra to create a very fluffy, not too heavy coat, but the, this conditioner is very good when you need to go styling and to go through the coat with the comb, like a knife in the butter, we say in our country. And here you see us wheeling with table and everything, Tum Tum to the bath. And as you can see, Tum Tum is really no problem at all to go in the bath. And this is very exciting because today we are going to use not the power bather pump, but the new super bather pump. And the new super bather pump has much more pressure to it. So I wonder how this is gonna work on this very dense, thick coat. So the only thing we need to do is like put water into the bath, like three fingers, like that much water put some shampoo in there, not very much because here I think I have used a little too much because it's too much foaming up. And then you can just spray on the dog with the pump and the power of the water together with the active ingredients of the shampoo will wash the coat very deep and not only the coat, also the skin and will take out all the dirt. The advantage of this system is you use much less shampoo and much less effort because you don't need to rub very much because the water pressure is doing the work that your fingers are normally doing. Because we don't want to have extra stress on Tum Tum and Tum Tum is not used to washing like with the pump, we have done the head totally with our hands. And here you see us putting on the shampoo and massaging and also going between the eyes, also the moustache, the beard, everything needs to be very well massaged with the shampoo and then afterwards we will rinse. And here you see Kitty rinsing. She will first rinse the head to make sure all the shampoo is gone off the head so we have no stinging in the eyes or ears or and the dog is at ease. Tum Tum is absolutely a very well-behaved, fantastic, good dog. Look at him, he's so cute. The rinsing is so very much important. Now we have used the super power bather pump. Um, we have actually used the active ingredients that go onto the dog, the coat, the skin, fall off, and the pump is recycling this active ingredient back onto the coat. It's just the same system as like a washing machine or a dishwasher. So this water goes up and down, up and down. The active ingredients are clearing all the sebum, all the grease, all the dirt, it falls back off. And then the rinsing takes everything out of the coat. All the dirt and all the active ingredients are then gone. All the grease is gone. And that's actually a very, very important part of the washing. We really wanted to use the Timaha clay shampoo on Tum Tum because the clay is like a very good detoxifying ingredient for his coat and we wanted to see the results so we decided not to dissolve the clay shampoo in the water and use the super power bather pump but use the second bathing for the traditional way so let's start massaging and rubbing the coat until deep inside everything is clean and here you see Kitty preparing the Timaha shampoo. She's like putting one and a half spoon in a half a liter of water. And the way she does it, she, she takes the thunnel and then she puts first the Timaha shampoo in and then she's gonna just put some warm water on top of all that and the warm water will dissolve all the shampoo. There you go.
makeup and all the shampoo is dissolved. It's very important to wash everywhere very well. Also the tummy inside of the legs, the pads, um, all sides inside the tummy, on the back, uh, behind the tail, under the tail. Um, so all parts need to be equally washed and massaged. So all the dirt and the sebum is disappeared. And now it's time for the conditioner. This conditioner contains like very much nutritive ingredients, including collagen, and it's very good to take away all the frizz when your coat is frizzy and to straighten the coat. And it's, it, I like this conditioner very much because afterwards I need to style and with this conditioner, you can like comb the hair up and down and you can do everything you want with the coat. It's a very nourishing conditioner. So here you see Kitty putting some conditioner between her hands and just rubbing it in the coat. We use it also concentrated on the coat. It's very easy to apply. You just squeeze out from the bottle directly in your hands some conditioner and just rub it on the coat and massage well so you make sure all the conditioner is diluted with the hair and mixed up and you feel like on your skin, you feel like a creamy uh, substance and you just wait a few minutes and then you are ready to rinse. And here you see Tum Tum back on the table being wheeled a bit further away and let's do some drying. First we are going to use the pet towel, the magic pet towel. This is going to absorb lots of water out of the coat and afterwards we can use dryers and towels. Here you see Kitty squeezing all the excess water out of the coat. And here you see how much water is actually coming out of the towel. Here you see Kitty using the quick fix for extra conditioning and for when you are brushing out the coat, it's going to like all the coat which is loose it's gonna fly out of the coat and as we are a little time limited here comes some more help thank you Emeline for helping us to get Tum Tum dry as quickly as possible and here you will see both Kitty and Emeline dry Tum Tum as quickly as possible as you can see here the dead hair is flying around and like it's very easy everything is done with the blasters and all the dead hair is just coming out by itself at this moment it's better emeline and kitty don't talk or if they would talk too much they would have very much hair in their mouth with the blaster it's very easy we commonly go with the blaster like when you have a big newfoundland dog like this we go after the bath we go with the blaster like a bit everywhere to get most of the water out and then we come back and we go like in a circle or you can also do an eight with the nozzle from the blaster and we keep the nozzle from the blaster like five centimeter or between five and ten centimeter it's like a hand uh, you know the, the palm of your hand away from the skin so you don't go like that much but you go like that much that close to the skin and you keep on making the eight until all the water and all the dry dead hair is out of the coat when the coat is nearly dry then you can just go backwards with your nozzle and go a little bit further to make sure you don't create any frizz and then all the like the dead hair is nearly gone but to do the finishing you can just go like 10 centimeters away from the coat but as further you go away from the coat, the longer it will take to dry the dog so don't go too far with the nozzle 
away from the coat or from the skin. Here you see some brushes we are going to use during the brushing. And we are also, for some areas, going to have to use some matte busters. Here you see Emeline spraying some more quick fix on the coat. Now we are finished with the blasters. The, the dog is nearly dry and has some more mats here and there to take out, especially here at the back. And here you see Emeline working with the matte buster. It's very easy with the dryer. You have to like put the nozzle from the dryer towards where you want to work. And then you will see the coat go out and you will see like a, a, a star. And at the middle point, you will see the skin. And that's exactly good because then you will see how the coat is. If there are mats, you will see them very good. And it's there you have to work with the brush where the coat totally goes open. So if you see mats, you go through with the mat breaker and the mat breaker is to be used like you don't content continuously work with the mat breaker. The mat breaker is very good to tease the mat open. Every time you use the mat breaker like a comb, you will cut the mats in a few pieces and then you stop using the mat breaker and you take a brush in this case, we use the slicker brush and we take, we tease out the mats with the brush. And when the mats are too thick still, then you continue using the mat breaker again. And then when the mats are cut, because the mat breaker has like six blades and every time you use the mat breaker, you cut the mats in six pieces. And then you have to use the slicker brush again. So it's slicker brush, matte buster, slicker brush, matte buster, because we have to be careful not to break too much coat. And if you would continue using the matte buster again and again and again, you will break too much coat. You can create an area hairless. So you have to be careful not to use the matte buster too much. The mat buster is also a very dangerous tool because there are actually knives. So you have to be careful with children or you have to be careful with sensitive areas like the loin or between the front legs where there's excessive skin. You really have to every time look very well what you're doing because they are dangerous tools. Here you see Emeline brushing with the Russian slicker and this is a very good choice because these pins are like extra extra long for an extra long dense coat and with this slicker you can just deep brush deep inside and you can actually brush until deep near to the skin so you are sure with this slicker brush all the tangles are gone and you can just make the coat very straight. And here you see Emeline using the Yento Tangle Teaser. This is like the same brush as the Russian Slicker brush with just a little bit shorter pins. And she's using this for the top of the back where the hair is just slightly shorter. And here you see how good the pins go through the coat. Now let's do some clipper work. And here today I'm going to use our Experto. I like the Experto very much because it's like light to hold. It doesn't vibrate very much and it's like fun to hold. And it's also a very nice design. I have done the design myself and I'm very proud of this design. Here you see me putting the Experto clipper on five speed and the blade on size 40. I do this because when I'm clipping the feet, I'm actually not only clipping the between the pads, but I'm actually gonna pass by the paws and pass by the nails. And I'm gonna use the clipper like this and just fly over this coat here. And this is gonna make sure I have to scissor less later. Let me show you a couple of pictures. 
Here you see our aim. On the left hand side, you see the paw with all the hairs and on the right hand side, you clearly see all the pads. It's very important. We see the pads and all the hair is neatly done and the paw looks round and just very chubby. And here you see me with the clipper at the big pad. You see me like drawing a line with my finger. I'm just making sure I'm not too much upwards there, but I really like this line to be perfect because later I can just put my scissor behind there and also make a very good line. Here I'm trying to get out all the hair between the pads, but Tum Tum seems not to be very happy with me. And here you are say, seeing me like fly with my clipper and go past the nails so I don't have to have too much scissor work afterwards. Here as well, you see me going with my clipper around the nails, trying to get everything neat. Then you have many people doing this with scissors, but for me it's much more easier with the clipper. And it goes for me also much faster and much cleaner. And here you see me working at one of the back legs or foot. And sometimes it's very sensitive. So Tum Tum is really giving me a hard time because he was pulling. So the feet, we actually start by doing the the pads, we take out all the pads here with the clipper and then we go toward the nails and here and here and here and here we do this part and then actually we go like this and we fly with the clipper and we like cut already a little bit of the hairs above the nails and that will make sure we have less scissoring work to do. And now let's have some fun. Let's start styling. Here you see uh, many different kinds of scissors. It's actually very simple. The smaller the blade, the smaller the work, and the larger the blade, the more you can do at one time. The smaller the blade, the more precise you can work, and the little works is like very good to do with small scissors. The longer the blade, the more area you can scissor at once, and therefore we use scissors with longer blades. When you have one scissor cut with a straight scissor, the hair is gone. With the chunker, you can go slightly, a little shorter, a little more shorter, and a little more shorter. And here on the left-hand side, you see the front foot, a non-finished one, and on the right-hand one, a finished one. As you can see, the lines are quite straight and it's all neat and it's like a very big cat foot. Here you see a picture from the side view from the front foot. Our aim here is just to follow the lines, as you can see here, and when you are cutting just think about a very big chunky cat foot. It's fun to use a curved scissor because the feet are curved and you can just curve, use the curved scissors to make the curve. And here you see me like making it the hair straight. Um, I'm not going over the foot here yet. I'm first making sure when after I've combed or after I've used my pen brush, it's all, all the hairs which are sticking out is too much. I really think in my head about cats when I do the new feet. feet. Here you see me with a small comb, combing all the hairs between the toes upwards. And then again, I'm going to go around the foot to make it as nice as possible. Here you already see me using the blender. Here it's like the fine blender. This is the Yento Ergoline blender with 46 teeth. I'm just using the blender to do the finishing here. As you can see, all the little bits we are, which are really still sticking out, you can very nicely finish with the blender. Here you see me plucking out the dead hair from between the toes, and I'm plucking it out because you see that that hair has a different color. It's like grayish, 
and it really needs to be plugged because it's not shining anymore and the good way is to pluck these dead hairs out. And here you see me using the scissors again and making a nice line around the feet. And here you see me scissoring on the pads again. There was a few hairs still sticking out. And now you see me going horizontal with the scissors to make the line the nice cat look foot. And here you see me brushing a lot, combing a lot, and again scissoring, combing, scissoring until all the hairs which are about to stick out or even thinking about sticking out are nicely scissored. Here you see the front leg from the side view. On the left hand side again the non-finished one and on the right hand side the finished view. We try to make the leg as straight as possible again here and we try to remember the cat foot and just to follow the red line. Here you see the front view on the left hand side the not finished and on the right hand side the finished one. We try to make the legs as straight as possible and to prevent hairs sticking out from the back of the front of the legs so the front view is clear. And now here you see the front leg and you see a lot of hair sticking out and we don't want to really say the word but it's like a little bit of banana and we want it to be really really straight. So all the hairs which are sticking out I will scissor with the chunkers. And here you see me working with the chunkers but as you can see I actually never cut twice at the same place. I'm holding my scissors from top to down and here you see me combing and scissoring and combing and scissoring and I'm really not like holding my scissors very uh, horizontal. If you hold your scissor horizontal, it's better you have a lot of experience and you never cut at the same place twice. If not, you will see lines and actually if you're not very sure or if you don't have a lot of experience, it's better to keep scissoring upwards or downwards to have a very even finish. Whatever you do, just keep your comb in your free hand and comb the hair up and scissor and don't do too much at the same time. Do little pieces and just keep on scissoring. Here we are just trying to make the line, the look of the, the legs as straight as possible. And here you very clearly see I'm scissoring, but I'm scissoring, I'm, I'm always moving my scissors, so I don't close my scissor twice at the same spot. And here I'm showing you with my scissors, it's not very safe to go horizontal and to stay keeping your scissors up or down. Here now you see a very straight line from the front. Here you see the leg getting straighter and straighter. And also from the side, when you see the profile from the side, it's also good that there's no like bubble or it's just also as straight as possible from the top to the bottom. Here I'm going to work on the side of the body. For the body we have a full body, like very defined, like deep chest, but if the hair is too long it will make the dog look really too out of balance and here as well we need to like style it so it's nice and long 
but not too long. So here you see me cutting a little bit at its chest. And here again, you are seeing me cut, uh, combing and cutting and combing and repeating. The new feet legs, they remind me of big, big cat foot and like cat legs. It's like very nice. Here you see me lifting up the front leg and showing you his natural line from chest to the tummy. So exactly that line, I like to follow and cut out every all the hairs which are really too long. It's very easy, just follow the natural dog li the line. And here again, it doesn't need to be very short, but if you take a few steps back, you will see the profile and sometimes you will just see it needs to be like chunkier, like a ele more elegant when it's there a little shorter. It's just a lot of combing and a lot of scissoring. And as you can see, the prep work here is perfectly done and it's very easy to, to scissor everything neatly because when we are combing, we can really comb through the coat very easily. Here you see me lifting up his left leg to be able to finish easily his inside right leg. It's easy because then you can reach it very easily and they can't like stand everywhere or lift up his leg. And it's just a very nice way to do the inside. As you can see here, this is a very easy way to do the underneath the chest to just lift up the other leg and then they can't like move their leg and you can see very nicely what you're doing and you can just all the hairs which are sticking out cut them off as you can see i'm using quite a large comb with the teeth quite largely out of each other um, because it's a long coat and if it's a long coat and a dense coat for me it's much easier to use a larger comb And here you see me cutting the ears. What we do is we like, I'm holding the ear, the skin of the ear with my thumb and finger and I'm going around. I'm not trying to make a very round ear, but it's not like also a corner. It's uh, like a, a, a soft triangle, shall I say. So the point needs to be not too round, not too pointy, just like a, a soft. Uh, triangle. Uh, it's important to also in this case go uh, scissoring. Uh, before you scissor you comb correctly. You comb all the hair like towards you or and with you and you comb the hair first a to the left then a bit to the right. You start scissoring and you comb again. You let the ear go so then you look at the ear from like a, a little distance, you see how he turns his ear and then you can continue scissoring. It's important when you scissor the ears, you think about the head because the head needs to be quite wide. Uh, it's also a little bit personal. Some people like to go too short here. Some people like to leave it very long on top of the head. I think the new fee head should be quite full and quite round and I'm also very careful doing the ears. The point of the ears can be quite short but then towards to the top of the ears I won't have a dip here. I will look at the head and make it as round as possible. Here you see me cutting the top of the head and is here between the stop. Uh, this, I'm going to go in with the blending scissors a little bit like this and that will make the stop come out more so then later you will have my, uh, the stop who is going to come forward more because here you've been cutting short and uh, that's just a nice little touch which we like to do with the Newfoundland breed. 
And here you see me next to the eyes, scissoring quite short. This will make the whole head come out better. And when you see the profile from the side, you will see the eyes better. And it's also uh, good to do this because then when the, when the dog is in the ring, you see the dog from the front and he's holding his head down. If all the hair is too long, uh, in the close to the eyes, you won't see the eyes. So, you know, it's quite good to do it with a shortening on the side of the eyes. And here you see our new product. It's the Texture It. And the Texture It is perfect for texturizing the coat, but also for volume. So here you see me applying with the applier. And the applier is a fantastic glass and bottle with the, like the metal tube. And with the metal tube, you can put the powder where you want it. So here you see me pu putting the powder very deep into the dense coat and creating volume exactly where I want it. And here you see me using the Yento pen brush. I like to use the pen brush to divide the powder everywhere around the head. This will also like activate the powder so the powder can do its job and create like the head standing up and staying up there. And uh, you just make rounder circle movements with the pen brush and the volume will be there and stay there. The texture powder has no white color, but it's like transparent color. And with the brush now, we have divided it. Uh, we have made it go everywhere in the coat. And now the excessive powder, we are going to blow it out. And at the same time, the powder is going to go between the hairs where I didn't go yet. And the air is gonna make sure it goes everywhere. And to spread it out, we already have used the brush, but now we are using the blower dryer and we have put the power very low and we are just blowing. Uh, the powder is gonna go everywhere in the coat where it hasn't been yet. And this is gonna like get rid of the excess powder and the effect is gonna be amazing. And here you see me again going over his head with the pin brush. And now you can see how much volume we have created. And now let's have a look at the chest. One of the things with the Newfoundlander, it's very, very important that the chest is one fluent line and that it's not like um, much longer in the chest than at the tummy. And here you can see what I want to explain to you, that it's one fluent, nice round line. And here you see the breather, Peter. Peter was helping me because Tum Tum was like getting tired of standing still. And Peter is just gonna help me in the front a little bit. So I'm keeping Tum Tum steady. Here I uh, see me um, here you see me combing and just like the hairs on the shoulders which are sticking out too much, I'm just cutting them off a little. We don't need to have a much, but we do want to show like the shoulder, we want to show the neck, we want to show the chest. So I'm just trying to divide like a little bit so you see the muscles and you see the dog without having like long, uh, thin hairs sticking out. As you can see, I'm doing the sides because for me, the top line has to stay the last part. And here you see me like making the neck a little bit. It's all very black here <laughs> and it's very difficult to see. Here I'm just trying to go in here a little bit. So when you go in here or out behind his throat, 
because here it's very hairy and it's all like hair and you don't like see a head, a throat and a chest. I'm just going in here a little bit to then go out to the chest and to show off a bit more his head or the start of his head. And this is also going to make sure that the dog has a little more neck. And here you see me working with the feather light curved comb. And the feather light curved comb is like exactly the curve we need to have the round body. So I'm just picking the hair up and going each time this technique is called scissor on comb technique. And I'm just lifting up the hair and scissoring with the scissor on the comb. And here I'm showing you how easy it is, how much the comb is curved and how easy it is to go with the comb and the scissor with this technique. I'm also using the chunker to do this because if you use the chunker, it's like a soft finish. You have to go over the hair a little bit more than a normal scissor, but it's really easy just to lift up the coat and you can lift up the coat from the back to the front and then go slightly uh, at the back or slightly forward and scissor and lift. And you can also do it the other way around. You can start at the front, lift, 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 and every time cut and end at the back. And I haven't touched the top of the top line yet because for me, this is like the last bit. And here you see me showing the chest and the line of the tummy. And you see that's like in one line. It's, I mean, the chest is no longer than the body. If you see some hairs really still sticking out, just lift up the front leg and you can follow this line from the front to the back. If you see some hair still sticking out, you just take up the feet, turn it to the back or twist it a little to the back and just follow the line, the natural line with your scissors and take off everything which is too much in the way. Here you see the side view of Tum Tum and we are going to speak about the back and the top line. Now Tum Tum is, is very correct. He hasn't got a sway back, but if you look from the side now, you would think he has a sway back because all the hair is not really finished yet. And let's have a look at the line. Here you see the line and it just looks like he has a sway back. So we do that we make in the middle of the back we use like textured power to make the hair go up and at the back of the top line we scissor it a little shorter and here again you see them next to each other the one on the left one has a good top line and the one on the right has a dippy top line when we are quite happy with the sides it's re really like time for the top line then and here you see me using the texture it to fill up the top line where it's like too flat or where it's even too high. When you use the texture it powder, you will be able to style the hair like you want. And then you can scissor all the excess hair or the hair which is necessary to style the perfect top line. I've just applied with the applier the texture it powder and now I'm just gonna go over the coat again with the pin brush and I can even put some more texturizing powder in the coat, lift it where I want it to be lifted, then do some, some brushing, brush the coat up 
maybe some blow drying afterwards to get the excessive product out of the coat. Here we go. When you use the blow dryer, the product which is not spread everywhere will spread everywhere and you will just get rid of the excessive product. So as you've seen on the drawing, it's very important the top line is like one hole and you see like the neck and then a straight line to the back and the back is not like slumping in uh, or the, the, the back, the, the bum is not going upwards. So it's really very important you have a fluent line there. And now we have uh, the line of the top the top line you can like finish the sides the sides were already finished but now you can like make one hole of the sides with the top line and make sure there's no differences and here you just see me combing and scissoring and combing and scissoring and I'm just actually combing the hair everywhere or every way I can just to make sure when it falls or when it's windy and it's in the way. So I'm just, you know, constantly using my comb and scissoring the coat. Here I'm just scissoring because you know it was like sticking out too much and I'm just going over the coat and scissoring. And here you see me working on the back feet. I'm just going around them because I did a lot of clipper work, I don't really have a lot of work. And I'm first using the normal scissors and just combing and scissoring around. So here you see me very nicely with the scissors straight down. So it's like a straight line down to create as much as possible like the big cat foot. And here now you see me using the blender. This is the Utsumi blender, just to make sure all the little bits are gone and the finishing is perfect. When you use the scissoring comb, because the teeth of this comb is so narrow and so fine and so close to each other, you can like grab more hair and when you are gone through the hair, all the hairs which you've grabbed are sticking out and I think with this comb you have a very much more better finish. Here you see me just lifting up the feet and just making sure all is nice and clean under there. We don't want to do, we don't want to go very short on the hock, but we just want to have a straight hock. So when you see it, it's like, neat and also like not much too much hair sticking out on the sides and here you see the drawing of the back leg of the new fee the white part is actually the new fee itself and the gray part is the coat and we are speaking about the hawk 
and here you see the red line. And as you can see, we like want to create more angulation. And to do that on the bottom part, it's shorter. So when we scissor this part, we scissor diagonal shorter towards the bottom. And as you can see here, the hawk is straight. But when you look at the drawing, it looks like it's not straight. So you are actually creating more angulation. And here you see me working on the tummy and on the loin. We don't cut very short at the loin, we just go round. And if you would cut too short, you would make the body look very long. So at the loin or just before the loin, we have the rounding, but for sure don't cut too much or don't cut too much upwards. So here you see me just making that rounding just in front of the loin and just combing. And now I'm showing you this to show you the knee. It's very important you don't make this area too flat. So it's very important. It's nice and round because that's where the knee is. <clears throat> and where the knee is, we leave the hair as long as possible. Of course, the sides you can scissor. Make sure there's not much hair sticking out. And here you can see from the side very much where the hair was sticking still out. And I just cut it. Now it's just doing the finishing, combing, looking from a different angle, having another look, just making sure it's all nice and neat. And here at the back as well, there's not like a, a, a line there. That's just has to look very natural. Also, when you lift up the tail. And here you see me doing again the other side, the inside of his legs. And you can see how easy it is if you lift up his one leg. just combing and scissoring and doing the roundness. Just making sure all the hairs which are sticking out are gone. Here a bit more. And here you see me like lifting up all the hairs just to see what the hair is going to do and where is it going to be sticking out and just going over it once more. And now here, let's have a look at the back. On the left hand side is the non-finished and on the right hand side, the finished line. As you can see, we have followed the legs and made them as straight as possible. <laughs> And here I'm getting some help with the tail. And here you can see very nicely the line of the back. So it's getting straighter and straighter. And here you can see like the line of the back leg, which is I'm following as much as possible to make it as straight as possible. It's also nice to go to another view. So here you see, me, you see me like looking from the front to just see this back leg from the front, from the side, from the back. So to see, you know, what it is from all different views. And here again, you see me lifting the right back leg because it's easier to see the hair is which needs scissoring. 
and the last bit is the tail. Now, we don't need to go very short, but it was a little bit, the hair is like sticking everywhere and we want it a bit like fuller and the, like the long, fine bits of hair we will cut off. So it's going to look like neater and thicker. We don't have to go like short anywhere. We just make to make sure it's like even and just we are combing and holding the tail, combing the hair. We are combing the hair. We are holding the tail in all kinds of directions. We are just tipping it and styling it so it looks like fuller and neater and not like long fine hairs sticking out. See me like shaking the tail just to make sure the hairs are all natural falling down and I can just take off the points. And at this time of day Tum Tum was really tired and as you can see I'm using a belly strap. It's not very uh, tight the belly strap but it's just to make sure when he wants to sit down he can't. It's not like straining him. Um, I just wanted to finish the tail. It's also very safe the belly band so there's no uh, danger to it and there's also no danger you will cut hair off which doesn't need to be cut off. And last but not least here you see me using the Showtech Shine and Serum. This is a very easy way to make all the frizz go away and to finish dogs up. You just need to put a little bit between your hands and just go over the coat where it's necessary and the coat will be nice and shiny. And here you see a finished Tum Tum. Tum Tum has been amazing on the table. He's an amazing dog to groom and I'm very proud and very thankful that I was able to groom Tum Tum. So thank you very much. Here you see the before and the after pictures of Tum Tum. As you can see, we prepared Tum Tum to go to the dog show with much respect for his coat and his structure. And also I would like to once more thank Peter and Linda for letting me groom Tum Tum. I really enjoyed this groom and thank you for watching. If you've seen anything you liked about the products I was using, there's a link down below with more information. This was Kitty for Kitty Talks Dogs. Thank you very much for watching, see you next time and keep on grooming with passion. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write your questions down below. We will be very happy to answer them all. This was Kitty for Kitty Talks Dogs. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out.